Let's talk about this recent move in rates. That's put what the chart master calls the most important trend line in the market in play. Let's bring in Carter Worth of Worth Charting to break down the lines. Tell us what this all means. Carter, what are you looking at? Well, we're all looking at the same line. And obviously, if you have arguably the most important market in the world, the, the government debt market, uh, and you draw your lines, uh, there are two ways to do it here and now. And by all accounts, the traditional way, the arithmetic chart, we're going to see that in a second, we have broken to sort of trend, but we haven't on the log chart. So here you see on the screen, this is, of course, the all data. And it's an arithmetic scale. So you have their peak there on September 30, 1981. It was a Wednesday, right? That was 15 spot, 87%. And we have our low on March 9th of 2020, our COVID low before the stock market bottomed at 31 basis points. Now, here's the thing about drawing trend lines. You can connect any two points. Any two points in any instrument, that's not a trend. You need at least three points. And to be fair, if you take the point uh, uh, where we moved above that trend line, which happened about three months ago, we have a trend that at least has three touch points. Now, look at the next chart. Uh, this is the log scale. And actually, in many ways, this is the more important because how many times have we touched the trend line to the penny? Six. On the arithmetic, two points, maybe three, depending on how you want to draw the line. This is the exact same trend line, in effect, since the 1981 peak. And that line comes into play at 2 spot 81%. We're very close to that. How we react to this line really determines a lot. Were we to back away because recession type uh, things are coming? Or do we really push through in a meaningful way? And then what your discussion was just, how far could we possibly go? I don't think there's that much left in the yield advance. So just to underscore that, Carter, 2.81 is that trend line, that area yep. of resistance. Okay. Carter that's Braxton it. Worth, our thanks to you as always of Worth Charting. What do you make it? 2.81, that's not so bad. It's not so far from here. We're there. Um, yeah. and, and, and the 10 year bond chart, I know people don't spend a lot of time looking at European rates, but this is maybe on some level a more dramatic chart even than the 10 year. When I listen to Carter say that, it tells me we're going inverted on the yield curve then. Um, because I, I think the Fed has to go significantly higher than 250 to 275 in Fed funds. So um, it, I, I think this is what Dan was saying. I, it's hard for me to see rates go a lot higher, yeah. except for the fact that these charts are telling me they want to go higher. Right. But what did Karen say? to me right after that she said but the four trillion that we added since 2018 oh, yeah. that's also the reason why it's not going much higher they have to service all of that debt the other thing is why they might have the opportunity to do a dovish um, uh, switch yeah. is because growth is slow what if it crude oil is back at $72 where it was six months ago all right, right? we're going to see a CPI print oh. or, a, or a PCE print that's yeah. going to be high, you know high sevens maybe eight something mm -hmm. eight four I think that's a big difference. And if you look at Carter's chart, I don't, I don't, I don't like to disagree with Carter because that's usually not a good call. But I would be interested to see an inflation overlay because we are so far out on the inflation curve relative to that. That was peak inflation at the beginning of that chart. And we've been down ever since, and now we're spiked up high. So I think we can go through there. Let's play Choose Your Own Adventure. Oh, oh I love this. Wow. I know. Wow. Let's wow. bring it back. Um, let's say <laughs> you do believe, Carter, and 2.81 is the ceiling for 10-year yields. What is the investment then? Do you think that the markets can get a respite? No. I think okay. if, they, if yields stop at Carter's level and start going down, yields be going down because the market's selling off and people are buying bonds as a flight to quality. So I think under those circumstances, if we stop here, start going significantly lower in yields, maybe somewhere between 2.3 and 2.4, it's because the broader market is selling off. That's what you have to be concerned about. My, my adventure is, is I, I want to believe in a healthy consumer, in a labor market that's tight, in very light positioning here, in terrible sentiment, um, all the things that could tick equities a bit higher. Again, I'm someone that opened up the show saying, I hate where the charts are, and I think semis tell you they're going lower. Yeah. Um, but I, I do think you have a dynamic here where right now this is an economy where the Fed has is, is got some room to push a little bit. We're not going to really know the impact of these rates for six to nine months. Uh, and I think for equities at some point, we're going to test those old lows, and we're actually very close to them. Uh, we're going to push through them, I believe, and then we're setting up for another very strong rally. Uh, if Carter is wrong, which is the call that most people don't necessarily want to go with because Carter has been right so many to times. To the penny. Past, He's been to right. The penny, <laughs> to the penny. Um, and rates go considerably higher above that trend line, then what happens with stocks? And I ask this question because it seems like no matter what the scenario for rates, stocks go down. And I don't like to say that. 
because I don't want to be that pessimist. Yeah, but but for, that's what it's like. For the last like. 13 years, it's been the opposite way. And the guy says this all the time. <laughs> so every time the market sold off, it's been a great buying opportunity. So I guess the point that I was just making a couple minutes ago, I think we're going to be having this conversation a lot over the next few months. And I think it's really important to also remember the S&P 500. If you're not a stock picker here, if you just tune in for uh, Tim's great hair or guy's good looks or whatever, you know, and you're just like long <laughs> the S&P or in. something like that, then you're only down 7.5% after the S&P was up 26% last year. Not so bad, given everything we know. Well, I think if we get there, those higher rates, because the economy is moving along, because people are still employed, because PMIs are up, because capacity utilization is up, I mean, that's a no-case scenario. And I think stocks can do better, even with the Fed type. Or go much, much higher because inflation is running rampant. That's not as good. <laughs> okay. guy, was that Blue Steel? Was that Blue Steel? No, I didn't, I didn't know. I think Who it was, was Blue that Steel. Guy? Ben Blue, Stiller? Zoolander. Yeah. Yeah. Zoolander? Yeah, it was yeah. Blue Steel. Uh, should I try again? Yeah, yeah. do it again. No. Do it again. Coming up. <laughs> Don't you have a bandana or now, something? Now, we need Somewhere. to put up the Maybe warning to our parents for children to look away from the screen when you guide us boost steel. Oh.